Uh, thank you, Jackie. Uh, yes, I'm uh, Peter Webster, man manager of, of SAS Space, uh, the institutional repository for the School of Advanced Study, or the SAS. You may have seen me abseiling down the building earlier. Um, and I'm here to talk about a, a just funded project uh, called uh, SAS Open Journals. Um, now, the, the overall thrust of the, the JISC uh, programme of which this was part uh, was to, to explicitly to try and find ways of increasing uh, capacity for open access journal publishing on, within the university context, campus-based uh, uh, publishing. But before I get onto that, it's worth just trying to contextualise the school because why we're doing what we're doing is, is, is germane to the, the topic. Um, not many people know, uh, uh, know very much about it. So we're part of the Central University of London uh, and we're the, 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 the umbrella uh, 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 body for a set of 10 specialist research institutes in, in uh, uh, fields, mostly in the humanities but with social, some social sciences, so the Institute of Historical Research, the Institute of Advanced Legal Studies and, and eight others. And we have a bespoke uh, remit from the JISC uh, for, what, for what is called research promotion and facilitation. And where that fits is that we, we have this national role to pick up some of, some of the, the, the tasks that wouldn't ordinarily be picked up by, 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 by individual universities. So there are uh, specialist library facilities, um, publi um, publication of, of resource guides, bibliographies, both uh, print and online, a degree of networking and advocacy and representation of the disciplines uh, and, and, and various other things. So that's where the school sits. Um, and so the project was part of the uh, Just Scholarly Communications programme, uh, ran from May to October last year, and the primary output was a new uh, journal interface uh, called SAS Open Journals, which overlays, sits atop, on top of the repository SAS space. And I ought actually ought to, 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 the, uh, to name check a, co a couple of other projects within, this, within the strand, uh, which are doing very interesting and similar things. Uh, the Epicure project based at University College London, managed by Martin Moyle, will be familiar to many of you. And also the Huddersfield Open Access Publishing project at Huddersfield, managed by Graham Stone, who also may be uh, familiar. They're not, that's not the exhaustive of the, of the project of, of this round, of course, but they're the two closest, pro closest projects to ours. Um, if I may be a little, well, controversial probably isn't the word. At about the time uh, that the project was starting last year, uh, uh, Nature published uh, an article called Open Access Come of Age, which was very, very excited that, 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 that thought that, that actually open access jour journal publishing had reached a, a, a state of maturity. Uh, it cited this, uh, which I still find staggering figure, that uh, uh, PROS1 published 6,700 articles in 2010, which is just ludicrous, it seems to me. Um, and... and, and uh, the, the, this other study by Larkser et al. 2011 suggested that actually the last four or five years has seen a period of consolidation, of, of cementing of games already, already, already in place, a sense in which actually there was a maturity in, in, in the field, um, uh, and so had out to open access come of age. I put a question mark in because from where I, from where I sit uh, as, uh, as, uh, as an information person within a specialist humanities and social sciences research institution and also I should say as a historian in my, uh, in, in, in my own right as well, this doesn't seem to ring very true to me. So um, the figures I'm about to quote should come with a health warning and that they're, they're based thing, they're a very impressionistic snapshot that I took one rainy afternoon last June. Uh, so don't, please, don't, please don't cite these as, as anything approaching a formal study, although I'd quite like to do such a thing, because I think as earlier on was mentioned earlier on, we have a data problem. We don't really know what's going on in, in, in the field, particularly in the arts and humanities. So I had a look at 14 uh, uh, pre-1992 UK institutions, research-intensive institutions, uh, and went through and totted up the, the total full text formal research outputs, that's to say articles, book chapters and monographs in three disciplines, history, English and law. And so the results were interesting. Um, the highest total in any one institution for those three disciplines w was this. Well, it doesn't look too bad until you, until you rewind and think that actually these are faculties of 20, 30 or 40 scholars, all of whom in theory are producing four items for the 2008 RE and so on and so forth. And these are the highest numbers. Okay. Now, I should also say these figures are a year old. Things might have changed in the meantime. My sense is that there's been some progress, but it's not moving very quickly. The mean numbers look a bit worse, and, and the medium numbers look worse still. 
Okay. So I, I think that my sense is amongst, amongst repo institutional repositories, the arts and humanities are a little way behind some of the other disciplines. You may, of course, correct me if, if I'm wrong. That's my, it's an impression. So I also then thought, okay, well, what, about, what about gold OA journals for the arts and humanities? If you look at DOAJ, this, again this time last year, there are this number of titles worldwide for these disciplines, or at least classified by DOAJ for these disciplines. That doesn't look too bad. Um, I then actually went back to have a look at uh, one particular um, hybrid uh, commercial publisher open access uh, 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 service, the uh, Oxford Open. And I should say that I don't imply any particular criticism of, of Oxford Open here. It's simply as a representation uh, of one example of where I think that the field might be. So I had a look at eight journals which have a gold OA option. Um, and those eight journals represent 8% of those within the overall platform and about 12% of the, of the humanities catalogue for, for Oxford journals. I had a look at the uh, current and previous two issues and totted up what sort of proportion of those available within these subscription journals were available on, on the hybrid gold open access basis. And so I found 14 open access articles in 74 issues. So that's not a, you know, you can probably do the maths, that's not a very, very particularly high percentage. Um, 11 of them were in a single journal. Um, if I say that the single journal was one relating to the history of medicine, and so, uh, and therefore the research which is, which is susceptible to um, author pays funding from the Wellcome Trust, you'll see what the pattern is. And in the four journals that weren't somehow connected with the history, uh, history and theory of medicine, there was a single item. So, uh, I could. I actually took out a slide, which I now wish I put back in, as why I think so, why I think this is. But I don't think that's germane today. But I'm happy to talk about it later on. It's got something to do with the way that humanities research is funded, and the small percentage of it which is funded directly by research grants. It's also got quite a lot to do with the significant role of the independent researcher in humanities research. And I'm particularly pleased that we've, we've talked about that today because I think it's crucial, particularly in, in history for, for 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 various reasons. So. What then is SAS Open Journals intending to do? Um, we hope to cater for both new journal startups and existing print journals that are looking to convert. Uh, um, uh, and also, crucially, both those generated from within the school and those outside. And this is where the, where, where the, the school's national research promotion facilitation role uh, comes in. We have a partic particular brief to be, to be working with societies other, or bodies other than ourselves. And I'm particularly interested in the learning societies. Um, my sense, again, without not based on any particular data, is that, is, is that um, the average size of a learning society within the arts and humanities is relatively small compared to some of the other disciplines. Um, they're by and large uh, small, they're independent of the universities, but mostly staffed and governed by, by, by um, academics from within one of the universities. I myself am just about to come off the, the council of one such society and just in time to go on to the council of another one. Um, so, but again, it's, it's the, the, the uh, voluntary run on something of a shoestring. If they have a journal, the editorial work is almost certainly voluntarily done, possibly with some small subvention for, for someone on a part-time basis to do some of the copy editing work, but not necessarily. Um, we heard earlier on that, that, that for, for some of the bigger societies, journals are in fact a cross-subsidy to other activity. My sense that there are at least as many societies where in fact other activity pays for the cost of the journal, uh, by and large. Um, I can think of uh, historical societies which also have historic properties that they maintain and make available to the public. And so all of these sit within quite complicated and quite a dip, all very, very individual uh, costing and, and, and financing models. Few of these journals stand on their own, in their own right, and the print ones are vanishingly small. The, these, are, these are niche journals, very well regarded within, within those niches, but nonetheless pretty small. And so very, very unlikely to attract the attention of a commercial publisher to take them on. And so this business model is under some pressure at the minute, I think, and so we hope to be able to provide some kind of safety valve for that. So we're looking to make a small charge for an initial setup. And really I'm talking about a small charge, um, uh, but even that, for some of the societies we're talking about, is, is proving an obstacle, I, I think it would be fair to say. 
once the shell of the journal is set up, the editorial process can in fact be handled entirely without any further reference to me. As administrator, I simply hold, hold, hold the reins of the service as a whole and make sure it doesn't fall over. And then the bulk of the hosting, uh, hosting cost, which is relatively small when now it's set up, is borne by the school as part of the RPF uh, remit. That's the model, anyway. How do we do it? Um, uh, you probably know about the Public Knowledge Project Open Journal System system. It's an a, a open source. I understand there are upwards of 10,000 instantiations of OGS worldwide doing all sorts of different jobs in different contexts. Um, but it seemed, it seemed the obvious uh, choice to make. Here it is in action. This is what OGS looks like quite a lot out of the box, as it were, down to the default colour default color scheme. This is a journal run by a former colleague of ours, so I feel reasonably happy to, um, to use it. Um, and the maiden voyage uh, was using this journal, um, uh, Amicus Curiae, which is the Journal of the Society for Advanced Legal Studies, which is the friend's arm, if you like, of one of our constituent institutes, the Institute of Advanced Legal Studies. Uh, Amicus had already been putting uh, PDFs of all of their content into the repository for three or four years prior to this, but of course we presented that, as one does in the repository, as a long list of alphabetically sorted uh, 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 articles, and so they don't, doesn't, didn't look like a journal. However, it now does look like a journal. Uh, and I, won't, you know, I don't need to tell you very much about how online journals look. There's a homepage, there's a list of issues, there's a table of contents with some links to some PDFs, and there's a PDF. So, you know, not terribly exciting so far. What I mentioned before that we can allow uh, journal, let journal teams to manage the whole process from within the, within the OJS system, which it does do. Uh, it caters for online submission by authors. It, it allows for, uh, for the for invitation and, and registering of peer review to be handled from within the system. It allows the commissioning and, and reception of copy edit queries and typesetting queries within the system as well. It's the management of the, the files. Um, journal, managing editors of journals can assign roles to different members of a team issue by issue if they want to. There's a degree of flexibility with, which helps dispersed journal teams working in many different sites and many different institutions. And then at the end of the project, I, as administrator, deposit uh, the PDF object to SASBase to the repository, uh, which is a nice four-click operation, which is very, very useful. And there's the repository, by the way. Here it is. It's an ePrints one, although it doesn't look like it. Behind the, behind the scenes, there's ePrints in there. But why bother? Why bother with the repository at all? In fact, those of you who know OGS will know that it handles uh, the PDF object itself locally. So what's the point? I think there are three reasons. The first is one of preservation. The repository already has preservation uh, routines and protocols and procedures in place. It seemed to me to make a great deal of sense not to reinvent the wheel in this case and to, to reuse that, that structure uh, 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 that's already in place. Secondly, it's partly about resource discovery, it putting the making the content available in as many different ways as possible. Um, as it happens, the, the copy that uses in, in SAS Open Journal C is the repository copy that is pulled out and displayed dynamically. But as far as they're concerned, that isn't the case. Um, and it's, and my, my statistics tell me that it's still the case that quite a lot of the readers of the journal come to the PDFs through, either directly in from the search engines or, in fact, through the browsing, uh, um, uh, browsing search within the repository itself. So people looking for other resources uh, in relation to law within the repository may, will find, find this material included in their searches. So put it in as many, many places as possible, and hopefully this increases usage. And then in relation to publicity, it seemed to make sense not to reinvent the wheel in, in this case. There are already set up, uh, uh, we already have established ways of, of, of feed, feeding um, publicity material about material in the repository out into multiple channels. There's the blog, which then feeds out onto the school, into the school news service and RSS into various other places. Um, there's the Twitter feed, there's the Facebook page, yada, 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 and so on. Um, the new thing we're hoping to do this year is to set up a, 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 a dedicated blog server for the school, both for internal and external research projects. And I hope to offer this to, uh, to journal editorial teams as another way of publicizing their material. 
and then this and then content from this the, from the, the blog server will then be syndicated through all the existing channels in the same way. Again, not in, integrate uh, what we're things with what we're already doing. Uh, don't reinvent the wheel. And this is due in theory later on this year. There are uh, two. Um, little technical tweaks that we, that, we, that we managed during the project which you might be interested to know about. The first is in relation to the sword deposit uh, from the journal service to ePrint. Um, those of you who know OGS will know that it ships uh, with, a, with, a, with a generic sword uh, 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 deposit tool. Um, what we did, however, was to tweak that such that it doesn't use uh, the MET, the OGS generic uh, 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 metadata schema, but in fact uses the native ePrint. EP3 XML. Um, there are patches uh, available at Google Code if, if, if it's something you find you want to do. They're freely available for use and there's quite a lot of um, technical documentation about how we did it on the project blog there as well. The second thing I wanted to mention is our integration um, of SAS Open Journals uh, with SNEEP, uh, Social Networking Extensions for ePrint. Uh, which is a, a function that's already implemented on, on the repository. It's a University of London Compu Computer Centre free plugin. Uh, it allows users to comment publicly, annotate privately, and tag, uh, so sort of keyword tag, pu uh, material publicly as well, within the repository. And so within the repository, it looks like this. There's a comment, one I made earlier. Um, uh, uh, you know, uh, as for keyword tags, uh, an item may have a number of keyword tags which are word clouded at the top, you know, larger fonts mean greater, greater numbers. If one clicks on Latin America, one then gets a, a listing of what, what's in the repository with the same tag. So, you know, the, it, it, Sneep is not new, uh, but that's how it works. Here it is, however, embedded at the bottom of one of the PDF pages in SAS Open Journals. So what SAS Open Journals is doing is going into the repository uh, and pulling out uh, uh, Sneep. Uh, uh, social media content and pulling it out and displaying it dynamically within SAS Open Journals. Um, another one I made earlier. Um, here are some tags uh, working much the same way. If one wants to click on uh, the tag for the Church of England, I'm sorry, that's rather small. I should, we should re redo this slide. If you want to click on the Church of England, one then gets a list of everything in the repository with the same tag. So this is a way to take people from one journal, should they want to, into related material in the repository. And so there are the top two articles there are within the journal itself, and the remaining ones are in the repository. All of them mine, incidentally. Um, not much in, about the Church of England in SAS page. I'm not sure how I'm doing for time. Um, there are some next steps uh, which I'd like to take. Some of these are within grasp, some of these are some way off, but they seem to me to be a logical step from where we are. Firstly, is reverse integration uh, with Sneep. Um, if one looks at, looks at this, um, it, it says at the bottom, sorry, um, to tag this article, please go to the repository to do it, um, which is kind of, you know, is, I think, a barrier to use. I think it would be fair to say. However, there are significant identity management and, and, and permission, various permissions issues in, in, in integrating the other way, having content. Uh, having social content inputted into the journal service, which then flows through the repository. Um, we, have, we have some ways of doing it, I think, but I'm still looking for some funding to make it happen. Obviously, I'm working, trying to work with new journals to bring them forward. Um, as things stand at the minute, what, what are we, eight, eight months from the end of the project, I have one definite uh, extra journal, which I'm already building the shell for, that they hope to launch this summer. Um, there's another definite um, subject to them getting hold of the la last bit of funding. And if, I, and if I tell you, going back to what I was saying before, if I tell you that this particular journal, not wanting to name them, are struggling to scrape together £600 to, to just to plug the gap, just to get them over the hurdle, you'll see that the organisations we're talking about are very short of cash, very short of cash indeed. Um, there's one project plan, which is awaiting a decision from the journal board whenever they get, whenever they, they, they get round to, to meeting next. Um, this is, I think, is also rather interesting is that they want also to retrospectively digitise 80 years of back issues and, use, and, have, and so have both new material going forward and the complete back catalogue, which we should be able to help them do. And then there are two at various stages of discussion. So I think that's, you know, for a, for a part-time operation is a reasonable sort of uh, uh, strike rate so far. It's mostly me 
in fact, it's all me. Um, this is slightly not quite a pipe dream. I think it's within, it's within reach, but there's, there's, there's a fun, I need to get some funding for this, which I haven't managed to do yet, is hybrid text and data journals in ascending order of difficulty and cost. Um, I'd like to include within SAS Open Journals uh, data alongside PDF objects. Um, now, OGS sort of does this already in a kind of slightly clunky supporting documents type way. There are ways I would like to, to amend that, that presentation and make it look slightly more integral to what's going on rather than incidental. That's not too difficult. I then want to, want to be able to amend the saw deposit such that I can then deposit both all, all things together directly into the repository. There are some issues here in relation to how things are then described in the repository. There's some work to do on the, on the, on the metadata schema to make it work, but still within reach. This is where it gets more interesting. Within the repository already, there's actually quite a lot of data, data sort of uh, that's to say things in tables as we, as we traditionally understand it, but also data more broadly defined as humanity scholars would tend to use it, text. Uh, semi-structured XML text or otherwise. Um, I would like, once this, once this data is in the repository, to be able to get it back out again in a more interesting way than a download here button. Um, and that, that, that's where the major development cost would be in, in, in the project when I manage to secure some funding for it. And then once that query mechanism is available, having the data flow back in the opposite direction and embedding dynamic linking to those queries from within the, not necessarily not from within the PDFs, but other XML-based EPUB um, uh, options. So this is this is not an outrageously uh, uh, well. It's, it's by no means impossible, and it's not terribly expensive. Uh, so it's within it's kind of within reach, but I can't promise anything yet. Finally, not quite finally. Sorry, open peer review. We talked about this earlier on. Um, has, been, has been mentioned before. Um, there are some interesting ventures going on uh, within the humanities in relation to open peer review. Uh, this particular project, the History Working Papers project, uh, which I don't have a direct involvement with on running, it's run by, by, by associates of mine in the States and the University of Hertfordshire. Um, but that is, my, that is my paper that's there available for peer review. And so uh, it's just a, 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 the, the relevance of this to to, 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 the journal, to the journal is that I think in, in the longer term, if open peer review does, does, does catch on, which I think it might do, uh, the, a logical step is then to join up open peer review platforms with open access journal platforms into which that material will flow. So I can imagine lots of discipli disciplinary specific open peer review platforms with a, a little drop down menu saying, please submit this to journal X now, and off it goes. Uh, it's, it's by no means relatively easy techni technically to do. There will be some issues uh, in relation to how one, made, how one coordinated that work. But it seems to me the, log the logical connection of two, two different strands of, uh, of work that are going on. But that's nowhere, nowhere remotely near within reach. I, that's very much chucking it out there. And finally, oh, hang on. There we are. Um, relative, this one, relatively low hanging fruit. Um, I'm hoping at some point to, 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 to make available an ePrints to OGS export plugin. Um, a lot of the work was done for this already in getting material from the journal that we used out of the, the it was already in the repository, getting it out, get the metadata out of the repository and into the journal system. What this would hopefully do would, would allow us to reconstruct uh, an open access journal inter interface uh, from an existing ePrints or repository collection. Not, dif not terribly difficult, uh, and certainly within reach, could be handy, but there we are. Um, that's all I have to say, but I'm very happy to take questions. <laughs>